In this lesson, we will explore Maya's animation preferences. The scene is zero to begin in your project files directory. Since we'll be working with Maya's animation tools, let's go ahead and switch to the animation menu set. We can do that a few ways. We can go to the top left hand corner of the software. We can go to our drop down menu to choose the menu set we'd like to work with. So here's the animation at the top. Another way we can access the animation menu set is by using the hotkey F2. So take a look at how our menu items have changed. Sweet. From there what I'd like to do is show you what we're working with in this scene file. Let's go to our playback controls at the bottom right hand corner of the software. So this is something very similar to what we would see on a remote. If you would like to jump to the very end of the sequence you can work with go to end which is the button to the far right. If you'd like to go to the very beginning, you can go ahead and click on Go to Start, which is the button on the opposite side of your playback controls. And then we can jump to frames one frame at a time by using the following buttons. So we can go backwards or forward. If you'd like to go ahead and jump between keyframes, you can do that. Let me go ahead and show you this. We can go to Show, go to NURBS Curves, and now we can see our infiltrator's controls. I'll go ahead and grab one of his control objects. You'll notice that I don't see any keys here. No worries. If you do not, you can always go to your preferences. And you can make sure that underneath time slider and then key ticks, you have the set to active. So there are those keys. Whoa, it's a lot at the end, right? Let's go ahead and choose save. All right, fantastic. And we'll come back to that shortly. Watch, we can go to now jump between keyframes by using the next option. And then, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and play the animation in reverse, which is actually a good thing because we can test our performance. If it looks good in reverse, chances are it looks good playing forward. It's a good rule of thumb. It doesn't always apply. That's not always the case, but more often than not, it's a super helpful rule, if you will. I'll go ahead and hit play so we can see what happens in the animation. So here we have our infiltrator crawling along this wall. And this is from our infiltrator production pipeline. So if you'd like to learn how to create this sequence in its entirety from storyboarding all the way down to compositing, I'd highly recommend you have a look at those series of courses. You can learn a lot because that's going to kind of help you get through the entire production that you might be involved with. All right, so now that we have an idea of what we are working with in this scene, let's say we start to explore the animation preferences. So we know we can access them by going to the button right next to Auto Key. Another way we can do that is by going to Window, Settings and Preferences, Preferences. Now this isn't going to send us immediately to our animation preferences, but no worries. Even though the other option, which is this button here, took us to the time slider settings. There are more settings that we would need to pay close attention to. So let's go ahead and have a look. First, I'll go to the settings category. Watch this. Notice the time drop down. This is where we would set our frame rate. Really important. You need to make sure that you set this before you start to create any keyframes. If you do not, you can throw your timing off, and that means that you might have to redo a lot of work. And that's time we really can't afford, right? So be really careful and make sure that this is set to the correct frame rate. Now watch this. If I were to switch this to a different frame rate, let's say 30 frames per second, you'll notice that our keyframes are going to be off frame. Our timing is going to be off. However, if I were to switch this back to 24 frames per second, and let's say if we did need to work with 30 frames per second, well, we can go ahead and turn on this really cool option, Keep Keys at Current Frames. This is going to do exactly what it says. If our key is on frame 45, it will remain on frame 45 if we switch our frame rate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, and I'll now go ahead and choose a different frame rate. Again, 30 frames per second, that's fine. Sweet, so take a look. Again, all of our keys are still on the same frames. So again, I find this to be really helpful because if we accidentally work with the wrong frame rate, we can go ahead and turn on this option and then simply go ahead and switch back to the frame rate we need. And there we have it.
Fantastic. Now, underneath animation, here's where we would set our auto key preferences. So we can go ahead and turn that on or off from here. And then we have options as to how auto key works. So if we want to key everything that's keyable, we can go ahead and turn that option on. Or if we'd like to only keyframe the attributes that change in value, we can go ahead and switch to the top option, key modified attributes. I highly recommend working with this first option simply because it's a very clean way of working. If you only tweak one axis, well, why not make sure that channel and only that channel will be keyed? Can you imagine if you constantly created keyframes on all channels that really didn't need keys? That would be a clutter to clean up in the graph editor, which we'll have a look at shortly. Now, if you're blocking in your work, this is a really helpful option. Key all attributes, because that means all of your channels will be saved, all of your poses will be preserved. But still, there are ways around that. You don't necessarily have to use this option. So I like to go ahead and work with the default. Again, key modified attributes. What I'd like to do at this point is go ahead and stop the lesson. We have a few more settings to take a look at. So we'll go ahead and finish this process up in the following lesson.